Good morning, Jackson Chapel. Good morning, and Good morning to all of you who may be viewing via Facebook or by other means. We welcome you to our Sunday school setting this morning, part of our worship service. We are thankful that God has allowed us another day. Even though it's raining, we thank Him for the rain. Thank Him for the sunshine and the rain also. But if we never had a problem, we wouldn't know that He could solve them. We wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Let us pray. Gracious Father, again, we come before you with thanksgiving in our heart. Thanking you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thanking you, dear God, for waking us this morning and starting us on our way. And you even put it on our heart to desire to enter the house of worship one more time. And for that, we are truly grateful. We pray to God that you would bless all the sick and comfort all suffering this morning, dear God. We have some bereaved families. We pray that you would watch over them and comfort them. And dear God, we pray that you would bless the sick all over the world. Bless every nation, kindred, people, and time where there's so much trouble all over the world. But we know that you are God and that you are God all by yourself. We pray for you to bless this Sunday school setting, bless this church and every church that stands open in your holy name. Lead and guide us in the way that we would, you would have us to go. We ask all of these blessings in the sweet and precious name of Jesus for his sake. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Our lesson title today is Serving a Just God. And our devotional reading will be coming from Job chapter 37, verses 14 through 24. Job 37, 14 through 24. Reads as follows. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Dost thou know when God disposed them and caused the light of his clouds to shine? Dost thou know the bouncing of the clouds? the wondrous works of him which is perfect in knowledge. How thy garments are warm when he quietens the earth by the south wind. Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong and as a molten looking glass. Teach us what we we shall say unto him. For we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Shall it be told him that I speak? If a man speak, surely he shall be swallowed up. And now, men, see not the bright light which is in the clouds, but the wind passes and cleanses them. Fair weather cometh out of the north, with God is terrible majesty. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and plenty of justice. He will not afflict. Men do therefore fear him. He respects not any that are wise of heart. May God have blessed with the reading of his words for the edification of our soul. Job, serving God, serving a just God. Our Bible background today will be from Job chapter 42. Printed text today is from Job chapter 42 verses 1 through 6. The verses 10 through 17 and our devotional reading was Job 37, 14 through 24. Aim for change. By the end of this lesson, we will understand the necessity of being humble before God. Appreciate how God listened to our thoughts and respond with justice. And help others see the justice of God in difficult situations. Keep in mind. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me, 
which I knew not. Job 42, verse 3. Serving a just God. <clears throat> Job was a godly man, according to chapter 1. Job was a man who feared God and hated evil. And so the age-old question has been, why do good, bad things happen to good people? And out of 42 chapters, Brother Jeff, I still don't think God gave him a direct answer. He didn't directly answer the question, not direct, for what Job was looking for. Job was tested. God allowed this test to take place. We covered all of that. Job lost his land, his cattle, his family. And we get over to the end of these chapters where we find out that his friends, sisters and brothers, and all of them deserted him too. So Job, being depressed, accused, finally he uh, began to complain. And I, well, but just because after everybody has abandoned him, God wouldn't even talk to him. And so that, that's a lot on, on the person. And so Job cursed the day, well, he said, been better if I had been still born. It'd been better if I had never been born. I should have just died. In birth. And then he Job complained that he knew that he hadn't done anything wrong. And he just believed that God is not treating him fairly. Well, uh, Jesse, uh, at least God could do was talk to him. Job even made a statement, I'm putting this in my own words, like, well, why are you talking to him? <laughs> said, I'll tell you one thing. If I can see you face to face, I'll have it out with you. If I can get you in court, I'd ask you some questions and I'd demand that you answer me. And, and that's, this, this is how Job felt. Because Job, Job, I hadn't done anything wrong. I don't know who all this happened to me. But if I could just see you face to face, I'd find out. Well, Job got his wish. Because in chapter 38 through 41, God showed himself. To the Job. And Job's response, <clears throat> described in this week's lesson, followed a lengthy and pointed reprimand from God out of a storm in chapter 38, verses 1. God appeared to Job and warned him to gird up now thy lungs. Like a man, I will demand of thee, answer thou man. Chapter 38, 3. That's where in Scripture God spoke. To humanity out of, out of, often time. Out of the midst of this storm came the voice of God demanding full attention as he presented his glory. He said, Okay, Joe, don't you stand up like a man? I know I'm gonna question you a little bit here. Now, Joe wanted some answers, but God gonna give him some questions. <laughs> yeah, I don't question you. He said from that point. God proceeded to ask questions concerning Job's knowledge and understanding of the world, beginning with, <clears throat> where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding, Job 38 and 4. Job, you know so much, and you're going to demand things from me. Tell me, where were you when I created all of this? When I created the heavens and the earth and the seas and the skies and the clouds. And just, just, just tell me where you, Matter of fact, do you know anything about the foundation or what is it fasting up on? Job, since you've got so much knowledge and you're going to demand that I give you answer, you answer my question. After asking about Job's understanding of the observed world, and Job, God invited Job to give an answer. Job expressed that he could not provide an answer to God's line of questioning and was at no place to accuse God any further. That's in chapter 40. Job said, I can't answer that. <laughs> I can't answer it. And so he, he, he didn't want to question God anymore. God's response became even more pointed. He asked Job if he would disannul my knowledge and condemn me. 
that thou mayest be righteous. Job, you, you're going to question my judgment? That it will make you look righteous? Yeah. God made it clear that Job, as a mere creature, was in no position to question the justice and judgments of the eternal creator. Job was in no position, and neither are we. We can't question what God is doing. I thought of the song that said, when he was talking to Job, and Bernard, I've been around a while too long, Pastor. <laughs> that song that Job, I said, let me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. And he told Job about all of creation and said, answer. Well, where were you, Job? Can you, can you do this? So he talking about the birds and the bees. He told Job that he created all of these things, and by him, all of these things consist. That's in Colossians 1 and 16. By him was all things created, and by him all things consist. They're held in play. Job, not only did I make and create the ocean and all of that, but everything stays in its place. He said, you know, the ocean has a boundary. Do you know how to set the boundaries? He said, when it goes so far, Jeff, it's going back to where God ordained it to be. He said, Joe, you know so much. Tell me about all that, Joe. I can't, I can't answer. And so when we get too small, you know, we don't think about Joe. And God will put us in our place that you really don't know that much. You know, we, we, don't, we don't know that much. So we have to be very careful. Uh, God's response was not an attempt to belittle or to provide an answer for Job's suffering and lament. Rather, God's intent was to show Job the limit of his understanding of God's purpose and plan. God's just nature would not be prevented or brought into question or limited by humanity. Whatever God do, we can't hinder it. We can't stop it because we are just human. We don't even know the full extent of what God is trying to do. Neither did Job. And so this, so God has questioned Job and Job couldn't answer. And we get to chapter 42, then Job finally going to speak to God. But he said, I, I, if I could see you face to face, I'd have it out with you. Well, Job has seen God face to face now. And chapter 42 is where we pick up at verse 1 and 2. Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Job said, after God got through with him, he couldn't answer any of it. He said, one thing Job learned from all that question, I know and acknowledge that you are omnipotent, which means you are all powerful. That's one thing I learned God, from you talking to me. You are all powerful, in which you have set forth so magnificently before me in chapter 38 through 41. Job said, Look, you are a powerful God. You are all powerful. I, 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 I know that now. And you can do everything and no thought can be withheld from you. Job said, I know that you are omniscient. That means that you know everything. I'm just a mere human being and I've been questioning God. A God who knows everything. A God who has all power. Hmm. Psalm 139 and 1 said, Oh Lord, Thou hast searched me and know me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts of all. Joseph, you know everything about me. And I done stuck my chest out in pride trying to demand stuff of you. He said, oh, woe is me. You know my thoughts, my feelings. You even know my suffering. Hmm. God knows everything about me. There go another song, right? We give credit to Santa Claus, but well, he knows when we've been good or bad, so be good for goodness sake. Santa Claus, he knows when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. So, yeah, so be good for goodness sake. We, we give Santa Claus credit, but we, don't, but we try to hide stuff from God. 
God knows these omniscient jokes are full. God knows everything. And I can't hide anything from him. That's, that's God. Verse 3. Now I hope we know that too, brother. We, we can't hide things from God. God knows everything. And we shouldn't lift ourselves up so high that we can teach God. That we can get into our Job, Job, Job problem was is Job said, I know I haven't seen. I know that I'm righteous. I don't care what them guys say about me. I ain't seen. And, and, and God, if I had seen, then why don't you show me? Or teach me? This is so Job was getting a little bit arrogant. So yeah. but he but he okay, he was he was right. And that was that wasn't the reason for his suffering because of sin. But but he was getting a little lifted up in pride. Uh, who is he that hides counsel without knowledge? Verse three. Uh, who who Job spoke many words without knowledge? What's, Job is repeating what God had told him in chapter thirty-eight. God told Job, "Who is he?" That highest counsel without knowledge. So, so, so Job turns around and and and, and use God's same statement. Say, God, you 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 asked the question was, who is he that highest counsel of? Who is he that questioned your counsel without knowledge? And Job had to acknowledge it was me. You know, it's me. Who 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 is this that obscured my counsel without knowledge? Job has spoken all these words about. I wish I had never been born and I know that I hadn't done anything wrong and I don't understand God's judgment. He said, it's me who question your counsel without knowledge. Yeah. He said, God showed him the heaven and the earth and all, these, all the things he did. And Job said, Dude, I, don't even, I don't know anything. I, I just don't know anything. The more we can see God the more we can see how limited we are. Yes. We, don't, we don't know all that much. Job said, it was me that questioned your counsel. <coughs> Three B, therefore I have uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. It's because I'm limited and I question your judgment. I uttered things that was too wonderful for me. He said, I, I was complaining and I said some stuff that I shouldn't have said. I spoke and didn't have any knowledge. Job admitted that he spoke in ignorance. Previously, Job showed remorse for his words towards God. Now, after that, the Lord further challenged him, Job woefully expressed that he misspoke a thing he understood not. Because my mind was without knowledge, therefore my speech was without knowledge. As God done talked to Job for three or four chapters, then you know, questioned Job, Job began to see himself. Until we can see ourselves, I don't know. He said, I cursed the day I was born. I demanded an answer from you. I thought I was being unjustly treated. Now I understand that I spoke in ignorance. I spoke without knowledge. Isaiah 55, 89. Say that then. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. For as the heaven is high, higher than the earth, so is my thought. And your thoughts, and my ways, and your ways. We think we know God, but we don't know God. Now the Bible gives us the mind of God, but when we get so lifted up with pride, we think we know everything about God. Well, you, you're sadly mistaken. Uh, Job said, "I uttered things that I understood not. Things just too wonderful, too awesome for me." which I knew not. God, forgive me, what is he saying? I, I just spoke in ignorance, 
I was hurting. And you know, we have to have compassion with Joseph. Joseph, I was in pain. I was hurting. And I lost my family. I lost my cattle. I lost all this stuff. And I just latched out. Don't we do that sometimes? Yeah. But, but, but we have to acknowledge that we were just wrong. We, we were wrong. No. And this is what Job is doing. It's not saying. I, I got too lifted up. And I am sorry. I spoke ignorantly. Verse 4. Hear, I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Again, these are God's words used to Job. And God told Job, listen, and I'm going to speak to you. That's in all those chapters when he told him. And then I will demand an answer to you of you. And when God gave a pause for him to answer, he couldn't answer. So Job said, I have done all these things given me. Now, God, if you would just hear me. In other words, Job is saying that if you listen to me now, God, I'm not going to speak in arrogance like I did before. <laughs> I'm ready to. I'm ready to repent. Hear and accept my humble and penitent confession. I will inquire, meaning I will ask. I will no more dispute the matters with thee, but beg information from thee. The words which God had uttered to Job by way of challenge, Job now returned to him in a way of submission. Job is submitting himself. Now, God, if you just hear me, I'm going to apologize. Can't we be bold enough to do that when we were wrong? When we were wrong, dear God, be bold enough to say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Job said, please hear me, and I will speak. And I won't argue anymore. Because now I see I did it out of ignorance. And that's us. Okay. Verse 5. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see thee. I have heard of thee. Job had been demanding his case and demanding God answer him and demanding that God explain to him. Job said, I heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. In other words, Job chapter 1 said he was a perfect and upright man. And God made that boast on Job. So, so how did Job become that way? He, he, he was a just man. How might Job have heard and seen the Lord and his deeds as a perfect and upright man who feared God and hated evil? How did he become that way? Job might have attended religious ceremonies or heard the teaching of God from elders. In his holiness, Job longed to see God with his own eyes in chapter 19, verse 26 and 27. Now, Job's longing came to fruition as he heard directly from the voice of God. I have heard thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see thee. Job said, I heard all about you. And I put to practice that stuff that I heard. But I really had experienced you for myself. Another song, somebody in this church saying, I'm glad I know him. For myself. Yeah. And we, we have to have that personal experience with God. Joseph, I've heard thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see it there. I'm glad I know him for myself. Romans 10, 1 and 2 said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Okay. Job had a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Joseph, now I heard about you, but now I've seen you with my own eyes. Said that. For I have 
bear them record that they have a zeal of God not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness which is of God. And now when he said going about to establish their own righteousness, here's part of Job's problem. Job said, I know that I'm righteous. I know that I hadn't sinned. Well, how did you get that way? It, was, it wasn't because of man, for, for the Bible tells us there's none righteous, no, not one. So, so if, if Job, you know, don't stick your chest out too far because you think you're so holy, how did you get that way? If God, you know everything. It's because of God. We, we put on God's righteousness. Jeff, for, that, for our, we don't have any righteousness. So if Job is righteous, he has to humble himself and give all the glory to God. If you are doing right and treating people right, don't stick your chest out too far. You ain't doing it on your own. Well, it's the Spirit of God that helping you to do these things. So acknowledge that. Job had a little bit of problem here, and God has straightened that out. Job, you didn't become a just and upright man on your own, but God is working with all of us. For we are going about to establish our own righteousness. And not submitting ourselves to the righteousness which is of God. Joseph, I, I understand that I was ignorant, and I shouldn't have questioned you, and I shouldn't have been so prideful. And, and now that I've seen you, and another thing, let me hit on that. Did Joe really see God? I heard about you, but now I see you. And said that spiritually. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> Job' description of his experience with God can be understood as a theophany, a special appearance or manifestation of God to humanity. So when God shows himself, to humanity is called a theophany. Uh, Moses at the burning bush, he could see God. Uh, at the Mount Sinai, when God spoke to them out of the dark clouds, that's a theophany. When God led them out of Egypt, a cloud, a fire, that's God revealing himself. Moses saw his backside. You know that Jesus clothed himself in human flesh? Hmm. Because the Bible said that no man could see his face and live. That's Exodus 33 and 20. So they saw what was called a theophany. And that's what Job said. I heard of thee by the hand of the ear, but now my eyes see thee. I see you. God told Job, listen. And Job sat there for about four chapters. And God opened them questions to him. Job said, now I see. I see. I heard all this, and I put myself in mind of me, Pastor. I was rode to work with some pickles, and, and we would call pickles. I rode the cab with them. Every two or three times a week, we would get in the heart of the Bible. And I wasn't even going to church. <laughs> you know that much. <laughs> and finally, this older guy, finally one day he was coming back, we were arguing about something. And he told me, you just need to shut up. You ain't read the Bible. You don't even know what you're talking about. And why, when I got home, that bothered me so bad. Uh, I told one of the guys that worked who was a Christian, he brought me a Bible, and I read the Bible from front to back. I've been reading it ever since. Because <laughs> the guy was right. I was going by what I heard. But now I see him for myself. Well, and that's the way we have to be. We got to see him. We got to experience him, is what Joe was saying, for ourselves. Yeah. That's right. That's the way we was taught. Mm -hmm. You know, do good. And you, you, nothing to happen if you try to do good, you know. Yes, that was his, his friend, that was their theology. Uh -huh. and, you know, God reward the righteous, he punish the wicked. So if you do good, good is coming to you. But if you do bad, punish it. Bad thing. And so Job said, bad things are happening to you, then you must have done something wrong. And God is punishing. But they didn't break it down to us that 
something bad can happen. You know, God can use whoever He wants to use. Amen. <laughs> That's what when you got to experience him, he made it to rain on the just and the unjust. For God, Job found out that well, God created all this stuff and he do with it what God can do whatever he wants to do. He said, who are you to question God? We, we, are, we can't question God. But now, there's some truth to what his friend was saying. If you do good, good is going to come to you. May not be here. But God got something in store for you. But now it also would come here. But he let us know plainly. There, there's two sides to every story. Give, give, give the whole. That's when you're teaching, you have to give the whole explanation. Yes, yeah, good is going to come to you if you do good. Good things will happen. But bad things can happen too. But know who your creator is. For he knows. He knows everything. And he knows what's going on. That's so true. And so we got to, regardless to what comes our way. Now I told y'all when we started these lessons, there was a thing called original sin. When Adam and Eve messed up in the garden, bad things started to happen. Uh -huh. uh, Cain and Cain slew, killed his brother Abel. Abel was a good person. Cain, Cain slew a good person. God, why? God still ain't answered Job. But Job said, you God, you can do whatever you want to do. I ain't gonna question you no more. Bring me back to me again when my mother passed. I got mad at God. I said, took my mom. My mom was young. She about 54. Took my mom from me. That don't make sense. Why do you get some of them old folks? <laughs> and then that took me a while to get over that Why? I didn't think about there were some people younger than my mother had died. I just think about my mom. And I had a round with God. I was kind of like Joe. If I could see you, well, we have it out. <laughs> no, that's Joe's our ignorance. And Job said, I spoke those things out of ignorance. And now he had to repent and say, forgive me. Forgive me. And he said in verse 6, 8, Wherefore I abhor myself. I spoke all these things about you, God, and said all these things, and stuck my chest out, talking about I know I'm righteous and all this. Now, I'm ashamed of myself. I'm just ashamed of the things that I've said and done. The first possibility is that Job abhor his improper and accurate accusatory words directed to God. These were words that he uttered, but understood not. Job 42 and 3. Job said, I am horror myself. Job. When we, when, when, when we have that personal relationship with God, God can show us our sin. I can't see it by my chest. It's stuck out and I'm so prideful and I think I'm all of that in the bag of chips. But when I have that personal relationship, God can show me myself. And the more I see of me, the more I understand that I ain't all that. So I need to pull my little chest in. Okay. Job is trying to get to the point he's saying, God, I'm sorry. And that's what we have to get to. When we roll in our brothers and sisters, we come to the point where we can just say, I'm sorry. Keep looking in the mirror. And I bet you will eventually see some flaws. You know, some of us, we really think we're all of that. But just keep looking. And you're going to find that there's some flaws in you also. And we find ourselves saying, I'm sorry. You had your, you was all puffed up with your chest stuck out. And then Job said, I abhor myself and repent. When God got through with him, he could see himself plain. And when God got through with me, I could see myself more plain. And when God got through with all of us, we ought to be able to see. I've been missing the mark in some areas. I need to tighten up. So Job said, I abhor myself and I repent. 
Let's make a note here. What was he repenting of? His friends told him, you've done something bad. You know, God done took your children, and <laughs> took all your possessions. So, Joe, what you need to do is repent, and God will restore you if you're not being hypocritical about it. So here, Joe repent. And I said, well, oh, is he repenting for what his friend said? Let's see here. He was not repenting for any unknown wrongdoing that was supposed to have prompted his suffering and misfortune. Instead, Job repented of and grieved over the ways he misconstrued and misrepresented the just and all-powerful God. Now his friend, he, he, he ain't repented for, for the sin that his friend was telling about. Job was repenting because he said, God, I spoke things out of ignorance. I said some stuff I shouldn't have said. I'm sorry and forgive me. That's what Job was repenting of. Had Job repented of the sin way back that his friend was blaming him for, and God had already told the devil, oh, Job, Job, Job is my friend. Job, he, he won't curse me. He's going to maintain his integrity, and he did all the way through. So, so Job didn't repent of that sin. He, he repented of the way he accused God. I had to do the same thing. <laughs> God, God, I'm sorry. I, I spoke things out of ignorance. You know, I, I really did. Especially when he took my mother. And I, you know, I, so I had to repent. When I had a personal encounter with God, then I had to repent. Okay. Psalm 51 and 16 said, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou would not despise. So he said, I repent. Uh, and you know, we can, we, we, we can run down here and offer sacrifice, but when you repent, God wanted to be from the heart. True repentance is a broken and a contrite heart. It's Job is pouring out his heart. God, I'm sorry. I acknowledge I was wrong. Please forgive me. This is from the heart. We repent because we got caught. Job repent because his heart was hurting for the way he had spoken about a just and powerful God. But that's what repentance is. Repentance means to turn from it. And to really mean it when you say it. And we think you have to repent of me. I come down and say, God forgive me. And it goes deeper than that. Okay. And I leave that alone. But it must be from the heart. He said, I abhor myself and I repent in dust and ashes. Job, well, I, don't, I don't know how, how long a period this, this, this took, but Job had been sitting in dust and ashes. Every sent them sores come all over his whole body. He went out of town and he went out to the dump and he put ashes on his head and he was sick, boiled from his head to his feet. He's sitting in dust and ashes. And all these things God revealed to him. He said, now I repent in dust and ashes. His, 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 his first repentance because he was, he was sick. And he put dust and ashes all over him. But this repentance come from the words that he had spoken against God. And he put dust and ashes all over him. So when we are when we are feel like we're about to die and lost our loved ones and you we are mourning and put in that time they put dust and ashes on. But now he had messed up with God and he put dust and ashes on him because he, he's mourning for the way he treated his God. Oh. But we have to be careful with our words, what we say, and what we do. But Job repent in dust and ashes. And if we'll confess, God is faithful and just to forgive. Even though we messed up, even though we said some things that hurt God, 
He is faithful and just. <clears throat> Let me go back to last week. I told Brother Roy that I was talking about him. And, 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 and I did. And I said, and Brother Roy was sick. And me and Wyatt and Robert, uh, we, Robert told him, y'all to shave. Man, you look terrible. And <laughs> all that stuff. And me and Wyatt told him, you done sin. And y'all to, to confess and all that. So verse 10, I'm going to stay on that thing. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So, skip some verses there. Before God restored Job, he addressed Job's friends. So he said, okay, Job. I, Job, I hear you repenting and all that, so he turned to Job's friends. That, that's me and wide road. We done told, told Rob about all this stuff he needs to do. Yeah. And, so, and he ordered them to offer burnt offerings. That's not in today's lesson. Job's friends followed God's directive. After Job prayed for them, the Lord then began the process of restoring Job. Well, we talked about Brother Roy, and God said, since y'all talked about it, y'all misrepresented me. What? Y'all spoke things that was not right concerning me. Y'all told that man that he was suffering because he didn't sin. God said, I didn't say that. Y'all did that on your own. I, I, I didn't tell y'all to tell, tell Roy that. That me and why we did it on our own. <laughs> he said, so y'all go back to Job. And if Job will pray for you, I'll hear Job, but I won't hear y'all. I said, oh, <laughs> okay. So Job's three friends had to go offer sacrifices to Job. And when he prayed for his friend, also the Lord gave Job twice. Now look, he waited till Job prayed for his friend. <laughs> We done talk about Roy, <laughs> and then Roy got to pray for us. <laughs> and he said, I hear Roy, I ain't gonna hear y'all. And if Roy don't forgive y'all, I ain't forgive you. <laughs> so I, I commend Roy for praying for us. Don't we wrong. <laughs> Dude, look at this. Let me get to this point. Yeah. That's what he said. And he turned the captivity of Job, let's get to the point, and gave him twice as much as he had. What was the captivity of Job? Many believe that the moment that Job prayed for his friend, that his mind, Job's mind, was calm. Now he been suffering for 40 chapters, 42 chapters. He done lost his family and everything. He's got sore from his head of his from his head to his toe. And now he got to pray for those who talked about it. And when he prayed for them, God turned his captivity. So what, what was he captive of? He believed that he calmed his mind, he gave him peace, gave him consolation. Huh? When Job prayed for his friend, he believed that all the sores on his bodies and the ball and all that stuff, why God just took away. God took away. Now, when he prayed. He, I put it in Luke 6, 27, 28. But I say unto you, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, Bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. Have we matured to that point? Could we, like Job, pray for our friend? They were Job's friend. Uh, they were wrong in their counsel, but they were his friend. Now, have you matured to that point that you can pray for someone who mistreated you, who had wronged you? If you hadn't, then you need to 
continue that relationship with God. You can get there. You can get there. I'm not saying it's easy, but, but, but you can do it. Job did it. Hmm. So we can do it. Pray for them. Pray for them. Even Jesus admonished us to do that. It says, verse 11, Then came there unto him all his brothers and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought on him. Ain't that last part that the, that the Lord didn't bring it on? What the Lord about? He, he allowed it, so we'll, we'll leave that alone. But, but what I want to notice here, there came unto him his brothers and sisters. Now, in chapter 1 and 2 and all the way up through all this, I know his friends wouldn't treat him right. But I didn't know, and I know he had lost all his family, but I didn't know his brothers and sisters and all his friends had abandoned him. Wasn't, wasn't nobody talking to him. All of them left him. That man had some, he was hurting. He didn't even have a friend. And here they all come to eat bread with him. Now, Brother Roy, I've been picking on him, so I said, uh, God said, you got to pray for him. And you prayed for him. And now, he all of us come to your house. <laughs> and we're going to eat with you. <laughs> I said, that's an awful lot right there. Yeah. Everybody's going to abandon Job. Now God has restored him. And now he come all his friends and his family. Uh, I don't know about that. But yes, I'll tell you, we, we can get to that point. Roy, are you there yet? <laughs> People mistreat you, and then they're going to come to your house and eat a sandwich and biscuit like somebody <laughs> I know in here. I ain't going to call them dad. Yeah, after he's going to mistreat you. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, but that's what they came all his brothers and sisters, and they that had in his acquaintance. I had a verse here. It said, Job 19 19, all my inward friends abhorred me. And they whom I love turned against me. That's what he said. My friend. I thought they were my friend. When I got sick and lost all of my stuff, everybody deserted me. Ain't that life? My chair, that's, that's life. I, I've got another verse here. Proverbs 17, 17. Said a friend loveth at all times. You, you don't know if you got a true friend when you got money or you don't have money. When you're sick or you're well, a friend, love it at all times. Everybody smile and face when you're free. Amen. But a friend, love it at all times. Proverbs 18, 24 says, A man that has friends has, must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. If by chance all them so-called friends leave you, you got a friend that sticks closer. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's one that sticks closer than a brother. All his brothers and things left him. But God will never leave us nor forsake us. So we got to put our faith in him and not in our friend. Because our friends will let us down. That's another said, shallow friends leave in the winter and return in the spring. That's it. A lot of us got, we got them fair weather friends. <laughs> they, the longest thing is sunshine and all that, they're with us. And I remember coming up, and Brother Roy, you might too, we had money and all that, we had all kind of friends. When, we, when I could buy the drinks, Pastor, when I could buy the drinks and all that, you had all kind of friends and all that. <laughs> but get broke. <laughs> get broke as you want to, and no car break down, you ain't gonna ride nothing. Your friend got them. That's them fair weather friends. Yeah. That's why Joe. Job got sick, lost everything, sitting in dust and ashes. Everybody left him. And he thought that God left him too. See, God, God won't even talk to him. Now God has shown him everything. And he's back to being Job. First of all, every man gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold. Said, oh, this is how the Israelites, when they come out of Egypt, God spoiled the Egyptians. And all of them gave the Israelites money. They gold rings and all that stuff. And they come out and they go to calf out of some of it. But 
But their friend gave him gift. He back now God could have used this as the means of blessing him with double. Verse 12. And we're about to get out of town. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yokes of oxen and a thousand she asses. God blessed him with double. Now, his friends had already told him that if you repent and turn, God will restore you. Uh, and and that's, that's a lesson for us. If we repent and turn, God will restore us. They spoke prophetically in the chapter 8 and all that where we was. And they didn't know it, but God making it come to pass. But there was one problem with their prophetic teaching. They said, if you repent of that sin that you have done, which is causing all this, then God would restore you. So they put conditions on Job in order to be restored. They said, God will restore you if you do this. And God told them, y'all spoke things that wasn't right concerning me. So I said, I ain't tell you to tell Job that. All right. so, so they put a condition. God was telling Job, telling the devil, uh, my servant Job, uh, he, he, he's going to endure this test. And in the end, I know you're taking everything from but in the end, I'm going to restore him. He was restored because he endured the test. Not because of his friend said some sin that he had committed. God said you was wrong and that accusing Job of something that I had accused him of. And he had seven sons and three daughters. Notice in the beginning he had seven sons and three daughters. And the devil took all of them away. Now he had seven sons and three daughters. So he said, one may be tempted to say, well, why didn't God double the children? Oh, okay. He doubled everything else. Why didn't he double the children? They didn't? That's too many. <laughs> Not that day and time wasn't too many. <laughs> well, it would take time to do that many And another thing, that I didn't get to ask, answer on, Pastor. Who did these children come by? Was it by the woman who told him to curse God and die? Or was it his wife? Or was it another one? The Bible didn't give me the answer to that. But most of them believe that it was his wife. Job was restored. Maybe she was restored too. Some say it could have been. He could have remarried. The Bible left off talking about that woman. Yeah. But, but he had 10 more children. He didn't want to say that. Though he had ten children whom the devil took, they're still your children. He had ten children who died. They're still his children. So now he got ten more. That's double. I said, oh, I, I can take that. But no matter. Yo, my children my children. Whether I have to go to the graveyard to or not, they're still my children. So they said, that's what that was about. 14 15. And he called up the name of the first one, Jemima. And the name of the second, Kezia, Kezia, and the name of the third, Karen Hepper. And in all the land that was not found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. And he said, what's in the name? Or one of the commentaries said, this day and time, we complain about what they name our children. He said, after I looked at these names here, I ain't gonna complain no more. <laughs> he said, I right, won't complain. Jemima, 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 this means the turtle dove of daybreak. Keziah means cinnamon or cassidy or fragrant or scent. Karen Happer. A jaw of eye paint, a horn of beauty. The idea was 
she was so beautiful that she needed no cosmetics. Well, those was his three daughters. Prettiest girl in all the land, he said. <clears throat> Only question is that he gave them her, he gave them inheritance. He gave the girls inheritance. The law stipulated that daughters only received an inheritance if their father had no sons. That's in Numbers 27, 5 through 8. So he said, maybe Job came before the law. Maybe Job go back in the period of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. But he gave his daughters inheritance. And so another thing is, maybe because God blessed him so, God blessed him with double everything that he had lost. Then it, it was no problem to give his daughters inheritance. And the son wouldn't even be jealous or mad about it. They were pretty girls, and, and Job gave them inheritance. He said he probably gave them the same as he did his son. I don't know, but we know that he gave them inheritance which goes against all the law which we speak through the Bible. Because the, the daughters just didn't. Matter of fact, it didn't even go to name these daughters like it did here through the Old Testament. But anyway, so, because we didn't acknowledge y'all too much then, y'all. You know. <laughs> okay, I got I to gotta close out. 16 and 17. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons and even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Some debate, a lot of debate on this age. So Job lived 140 years. It said after this, Job lived 140 years. So it said after this, before all these calamities happened, said it's believed that Job was about 70 years old. So after all of that, he lived 140. Okay? 140 and 70 is what? Yeah. Okay, so some believe that he was 210 years old. He said that the Septuagint makes him believe that he was about 240. Uh -huh. But the Hebrew text makes it about 210 years old. They believe that he was about 70 years old when all this happened. And God gave him 140 after, which would be 210 years. Now, the father of Abraham, Tyr, he lived to be 205. So they try to put all this in and say, well, he must have lived back in that area because God was bringing lifespan down. So Terah lived to be 205. Abraham, I mean Job, 210. So it might have been in that time span that Job lived. Psalm 9 and 10 said, three scores and 10 if by reason of strength. Hmm, four scores, which means 80. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. If you are Job, we made it to 80. We've been blessed. He said, and that's the lifespan. Enoch was 900 some years old. And we went down, down, down. Now 70. And by reason of strength, you might get 80. Right. And, and that's a comparison. Right. But Job lived to be full of age. Right. I was. I was leaving Lowe's last week, this week, and I seen Mr. Craven going in. I told my wife, I said, hey, he's truly been blessed. Okay, Mr. Craven still go, he go around. And he was going into Lowe's. He's still going, full of age. Uh, this is what he did for Job. Job lived to be full of age. Uh, we got to close out right there. Let us pray. God of infinite wisdom, remind us that 
we do not see as you see. Give us confidence to trust that you are just and worthy of full obedience. We ask all of this in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.